In a world of increasing censorship and online content moderation, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing is becoming more important than ever. But there is a downside with peer-to-peer -peer protocols like BitTorrent, and that is the fact that the peers who participate in data exchanges or torrent swarms know who each other is by their IP address. And this creates a problem because if the data that's being exchanged is copyrighted or is something that a tyrannical government wants to suppress, then the participants in the data exchange could be unmasked through an official request to their respective internet companies. Now, you might consider using a VPN and configuring that in your BitTorrent client so that your IP address is hidden whenever you share files. And this does work but you have to put a lot of trust in your VPN to not unmask you because they know what your true IP address is, they know what torrents you're sharing and when you're connecting to them, and everyone else that is participating in the torrent swarm can also see what VPN you're using. In fact, they can see the exact server that you're connected to because that's the IP address that's going to show up in the swarm. So obviously, whatever threat actor that doesn't want you sharing that data could just go to the VPN provider and request data from them to unmask you. And unless you're using one of the few VPNs that really truly don't keep any activity logs and let you pay for the service without a credit card and don't require you to create an account with your email, phone number, or anything else that would leave a paper trail back to you, then you're screwed. But even if your VPN is doing all of that, it still might not be enough because there's only a handful of VPN companies out there that offer that gold standard of privacy that I just outlined, and there's not that many people that are actually using them. So if your threat actor is able to collaborate with the ISP to monitor your internet traffic like a tyrannical government does, then they're going to see when you connect to the VPN server, and then they monitor the swarm for whatever torrents you share or download, and they're gonna see that same server's IP pop up. And even though your connection is encrypted by the VPN, the time of connection and data sent is still pretty much gonna match. The number of bytes sent and received aren't gonna be exact because there's more data that's added in with the encryption process, but if you torrent a five gigabyte file at 10 a.m. for example, the threat actor can see the VPN server connected to the swarm around the same time that you connected to the VPN and at least five gigabytes of data traveled through each hop around that same time that you were connected. And depending on your situation, those correlations might be enough for the government to come and lock you up, get a search warrant, question you, and all kinds of other nasty things. So if we want to share files anonymously, we're going to need some kind of dark web to do it. And this is where I2P, AKA the Invisible Internet Project comes in. Just like Tor, I2P routes your connection through multiple encrypted hops that are in different locations around the world, making it very difficult to track anyone. But the main difference is that everyone using I2P actually ends up routing traffic for other people as well. So the more people that use it, the faster it gets, in contrast to Tor, where the vast majority of users just take a bandwidth on the network and less than 1% of people are actually running relays to help the network, and at times when everyone and their mother hops on to visit a new dark web market or something like that, Tor ends up getting really slow, whereas, like I said, more people connect to I2P and it gets faster. And the traffic routing through I2P also makes data and time correlation attacks much harder to do because the traffic that's meant for you is being mixed in with traffic that you're routing to other people. So there's way more data flowing through your connection than stuff that you're actually downloading or uploading. And finally, because I2P is already a peer-to-peer -peer network, torrenting is not only supported, but it's encouraged. In fact, there's torrent clients like I2P Snark that are pre-configured to work over this amazing dark web. So I'm gonna demo it to you all really quick, 
Of course, we need to have an ITP router running, which I've covered how to do on my channel already. I'm running my router through I2PD. And unfortunately, as you can see, my connection is firewalled by my ISP. I might be able to call them to fix that, but I2P still works even with crappy internet like this. So I want to show that to you guys uh, on a worst case scenario connection first. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit slow, but in my experience, it's still faster than Tor. Now, when you're configuring your I2P console, make sure that you enable I2CP in your config so that you can use I2P Snark. That Torrent application, along with Views and Bigly BT, need I2CP to connect to the network. Other Torrent clients are gonna require SAM or other I2P protocols. So make sure that you enable whichever ones you need and verify that the settings are enabled within your web console before you start your Torrent application. So this is the setting to enable I2CP within the uh, i2pd.conf file on the default port of 7654. Now go ahead and download the I2P Snark standalone program from i2pplus.github.io if you haven't already. And you can also get I2P Snark with the I2P Plus bundle if you don't have an I2P router like I2PD installed already. I2P Plus is actually more similar to the original I2P Java implementation, but with a better UI and there's more software bundled together with it. Um, but since I'm already using I2PD, I'm just gonna use the standalone application. Also, since I2P Plus and the original I2P program are written in Java, you're going to need to download Java to your system in order to run them. Uh, so once you have all of those dependencies installed and I2P Snark downloaded, we can go ahead and run it with the launch I2P snark script. And this should automatically open up the web interface um, for it in your default browser. This is what the I2P snark program looks like. And you can always access this web interface when it's running by visiting localhost and then port 8002 in your browser. So we're gonna come down here to the magic wand icon to create a torrent file. And here it wants us to put in the data to seed. So all you have to do is just copy uh, the path to a directory or to a file that you want to share. So I'm going to be using this test torrent. And here's also some options to select trackers and to filter out content that you know you don't want to share so that you don't accidentally do that. Um, and then we can just click the Create Torrent button. Okay, and then we see some information here that it's detected the torrent and everything like that. Um, so now you can see the folder for Test Torrent is here, and if we click into it, we can see the content. Um, and so what I'm going to be testing with is Jordan Peterson's most controversial lecture ever. We'll just have a quick preview of this. Okay, so there we have Sneed's feed and seed, but you really have to think about this. It has what you need to create and sustain life. It's like, how would you say, an analogous manifest of the Garden of Eden? All right, so yeah, this is pretty heavy stuff for YouTube, so I'm not gonna play anymore. Um, you know, there's a lot of city slickers out there with cars made in Guatemala that wish they could purge this from the internet. Well, <laughs> good luck deleting it from the dark web, bucko. Start the torrent. Okay, so now we are actively sharing it, and up here uh, is the magnet link that we can copy, or actually you can copy it easier by going back to the ITP Snark homepage and then just click this and boom, our magnet link has been copied to our clipboard. So then you can go ahead and share this with somebody or anybody who you want to download the content. 
Okay, so I'm here in ITP Snark, which is running on a different computer, and this is actually running as part of ITP Plus, so I can show you what that web console looks like for that version of I2P. Definitely the nicest looking one out of all the different I2P implementations that I've used. Um, you can see all the different programs that are in here. But anyway, going back to I2P Snark, in order to add a new torrent, you want to click on this green plus button here. And you wanna make sure that the data directory is set to where you actually want to download the torrent to. I think on Windows by default, it's gonna to download to your uh, program folder. So make sure that that's set correctly. And in the from URL field, you want to paste in that magnet link. And now we can get started with downloading the torrent. It does take a little bit longer for peers to discover each other on I2P than when you're doing torrents on the clearnet. And like I said, this download might take a little bit longer because my connection is firewalled, but if you configure I2P for high bandwidth, it'll still be pretty fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part of the video until the download finishes. All right, and so now it is done, and we can go ahead and start playing this file here on the other computer. Feed and seed, but you really have to think about this. It has what you need to create and sustain life. It's like, how would you say, an analogous manifest of the Garden of Eden, and then you have Homer. His farming life is in chaos, an absolute hell, but he makes this sort of pilgrimage to Sneed's feed and seed to find... And there you have it. That's how you can transfer files peer-to-peer -peer anonymously over the ITP network. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm. And check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like the Little Damon t-shirt and the Come and Find It hoodie. 10% discount store-wide for paying in Monero at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.